I married Joe. What a girl, what a world, what a life. Oh, I married Joe. What a mind, love is blind, what a wife. Joan Davis. With Jim Backus in I That. Really, I must be spoiled. My maid Hilda makes such a wonderful salad, I should never order it out. Oh, Joan, you don't have a maid, do you? No. My maid Mimi makes very good salad, but her specialty is chicken a la king. If Henry had his way, he'd eat it seven nights a week. Mmm, the sauce is delicious. I'll bet it doesn't compare with Hilda's. Who's Hilda? My maid, of course. Oh. You know, Johnny, I simply don't understand how you get along without a maid. Just the other night, Henry and I were talking about you and Brad, and Henry said he didn't know how you managed without a maid. No, oh, it's a coincidence. You know, just the other night, Brad and I were talking about you and Henry, and Brad said he didn't understand how you two could afford a maid. Well, Henry may not be rich, but he certainly knows how to manage his affairs, and at least he's considerate of his wife. Oh, well, Brad is considerate of me, too. It's just that he knows that I know how to take care of a house better than a maid could. He knows that I can cook better, wash better, clean better, get down on my hands and knees and scrub floors better. Wait a minute, how does he know all that if we never had a maid? <laughs> Say, wouldn't it be wonderful to have somebody here to answer the phone when we were both out? Joan, I know that you're leading up to something, but I can't quite figure out what it is. So why don't you cut the red tape and come to the point, hmm? Oh, Brad, just think, when honey. Stay... If you and I could get out together all afternoon and then be able to come home at night and find the house thick and span and a delicious pot roast and potato pancake dinner waiting for us. Now, now look, Joan, so that's it. Now, <laughs> look, dear, we've been through that before, and for the last time, we're not going to have a maid. We, we just can't afford it. Well, I don't know why not, Brad. The Tobins have a maid, Mildred and Henry have a maid, and, well, we're just as rich as they are. Well, if they want to live over the head, that's up to them. But we have a long-range plan, and we're going to stick to it. Couldn't we shorten the range and live a little? Oh. <laughs> no, absolutely not, dear. <clears throat> Very hungry. Let, let's eat. Okay, I'll bring it out. I'll help you. Oh, uh, no, Brad. No? no, you've had an exhausting day in court. Well, you know. I don't want you to exert uh, yourself. Don't move. <laughs> hey, you don't even have to come to the table. No. The table will come to you. How's oh. uh, that, dear? Oh, it's <laughs> uh, Can you move? No, no. Well, that's fine. It's just the way it should be. Now, just take it easy. I'll get it for you. <laughs> Mrs. Stevens, I... I haven't told my husband about you yet. Oh, dinner's ready. Don't you want me to serve it? Uh, no, I'll serve it. You just stay in the kitchen and don't make any noise. Here's your stew, Brad. I, I mean, here's your stew, Brad. <laughs> oh, the stew looks so good, I can uh, hardly wait. Uh, by the way, Joan, haven't you uh, fixed the stew a, a little differently? <laughs> oh, yes, it's a new recipe. It's called uh, Stew Alla Tilly. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It must taste so good, I can hardly eat it. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, because after I've eaten it, I won't have anything to look forward to. <laughs> oh, you, you like it, huh? Mm, you know, when I eat this, my cup of joy runneth over. A little bit drooleth down your chin. <laughs> Try the vegetables, Brad. Mm. Darling, you always were a good cook, but this is inspired, believe me. Well, honey, we could have good food like this every night. Of course, it would cost a few pennies more. Oh, what's a few pennies? <laughs> I'd gladly spend 50 or or $100 more a month for, for food like this. Mm. Then you wouldn't mind spending it on Tilly. Uh, Tilly? Who's Tilly? Come on out, Tilly. <laughs> Brad? Uh, this is our new cook, uh, Tilly Jenkins. Now, Joan, we went through all... Oh, my favorite lemon meringue pie. Hello, Your Honor. Uh, Tilly, I'm awfully sorry, but my husband objects to having a maid, and I guess you'll have to leave. 
Well, don't be silly, Joan. You can't let Tilly go. Well, what about our long-range plan? Plans are made to be changed. Tilly stays. Well, okay, Brad, if you say so. <laughs> you men always get your way. <laughs> last two weeks have been among the most memorable in my life. And I owe it all to you for finding Philly. <laughs> oh, it was nothing, dear. The kitchen door was open and she just walked in. Yes, but you had the presence of mind to leave the door open. How did we ever live before we found Philly? Oh, we weren't living. We were just existing. You know, she's a great artist in the kitchen. As Shakespeare might have said, what food these morsels be. <laughs> well, I just don't know what we'd ever do without her. Perish the thought. And all my girlfriends are just green with strawberry shortcake. <laughs> Judge Stevens, Your Honor, I'd like to talk to you. Yes, yes, Tori. Go right ahead, whatever on your mind. Well, I came to California because I wanted to see some movie stars. And in the two weeks I've been working here, I haven't seen a single one. So, I'm quitting. But Tilly, but Tilly, you can't quit. You? But, but, but Tilly, you can't quit. Joan, isn't there some way we can talk Tilly into staying with us? Well, I tried, Brad, but all she'll do is finish out the week. She says that she came to California to see some movie stars, and she figures if she works over in Hollywood, she'll have a better chance. Tilly, Tilly, if you'll stay with us, we'll give you every weekend off besides Thursdays. And you can wear my mink coat. What's the good? I got no place to go. You can have the car. I can't drive. I'll drive you. It's no use, Mrs. Stevens. If I could just get one peek at Gregory Peck or Ronald Coleman or Clark Gable or Rodney Parker, I'd be happy. I hate to leave you folks, but I want to go someplace where I can... Maybe run into some movie stars. <laughs> Did you hear that, Brad? Tilly is leaving us so she can see some movie stars. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Oh, Tilly, <laughs> our most intimate friends are movie stars. Huh? <laughs> they are. Like who? Um, uh, Brad, tell her who our friends are. Uh, 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 no, Joan, uh, you tell her. Well, we know... Uh, mm. Excuse me. Hello? Hello, Joanie. What time do you want me to pick you up for the bridge game? Oh, hello, Claudette. <laughs> Claudette Colbert. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is Mildred. Mildred Webster. No. No, really? No. <laughs> Did Lana really say that about me to Ava? <laughs> oh, Hetty was there, too, huh? Hetty Lamar? Who else? Ask her if it's really true that she bathes in milk. <laughs> Claudette. Oh, you heard, huh? What? I see. Half and half. <laughs> Joni, are you out of your mind? Tell Deborah I feel the same way about her. Goodbye, Greer. I thought you were talking to Claudette. Oh, well, I was, but uh, Greer was there, and she insisted on speaking to me, too. <laughs> did uh, Greer say hello to me? Well, of course he did, Brad. You know how she feels about you. Oh, yeah, well, I'm glad to hear it. Good old Greer. Well, will you stay, Tilly? I don't know. You don't seem to know nothing but female stars. I got more of a yin to meet some leading men. Oh, uh, well, we know lots of uh, leading men, don't we, Brad? Lots of them. Ronald Coleman? Oh, I know Ronald Coleman as well as I know Clark Gable. Really? <laughs> Maybe better. And Rodney Parker? Oh, 
He's my dream man. <laughs> Tilly, would you believe me if I told you that Rodney Parker sat in that same spot that you're sitting in right this moment? <gasps> no. <laughs> uh oh, Tilly, would you answer the phone, please? Oh. Stevens resident. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Uh, Joni, this is Ronnie. So nice to hear your voice again. And how is that Prince of Goodfellows? Brad? This is Stevens. It's Ronald Coleman. <laughs> oh, not him again. Well, tell him I'm not in. Uh, just a moment, my dear. Clark wants to say hello. Hello, baby. How are you, baby? <laughs> What's new, baby? Are you there? This is Ronnie again. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Coleman. Uh, Mrs. Stevens isn't in. Oh, yes, yes, I see. Will you tell her I called? Old girl. Yes, sir, I will. Mrs. Stevens, how could you do that to Ronald Coleman? Oh, you have to be firm with him. Otherwise, he gets underfoot. Oh, Joni, did, uh, did I hear the phone ring? Yes, it was Ron and Clark. Oh, no, not them again, yeah. I mean. Mrs. Stevens, why didn't you tell me you know such famous actors? Why, well, I didn't think it was important. <laughs> and you say you know Rodney Parker? Oh, do I know Rodney Parker? <laughs> oh, do we know Rodney Parker? <laughs> Mrs. Stevens, I'll stay. Oh, thank you, Tilly. Thank you, Tilly. I mean, thank you. Thank you, Tilly. On condition that you have Rodney Parker here for dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> but, Tilly... You know, he's been the only man in the world for me ever since I saw him in Young Hearts in Vienna. Uh, now, look, Tilly, if we uh, just... If... I'll make a special dish for him. <laughs> Nothing's too good for Rodney Parker. I'm going to plan the menu right now. <gasps> Rodney. Tilly expects Rodney Parker here for dinner, and, and he won't be here, and neither will Tilly. We should have been satisfied just being familiar with Ronald Coleman, you know. Yes, well, all I can say is, it's a far, far better thing I do than anything I have ever done before. It is a far, far better rest I go to than any I have ever known. Peter. Peter. Come here, Peter. I'm sick. Are you hear me? Sick, 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 sick. Why am I sick that she's leaving us, Fred? <laughs> Joan, there's no use in worrying and making yourself sick. Just tell Tilly you were kidding and you don't know Rodney Parker. Well, that's easy for you to say. But the moment she hears that, she'll walk right out. Well, you're going to lose it tonight when Rodney doesn't come for dinner. I know, but I keep hoping for some miracle. Beautiful dreamer, I dream of you. Rodney Parker, I hope you like stew. Mrs. Stevens, do you think that Rodney Parker would autograph his picture in this magazine? You ask him. He's such a good friend of yours, he won't refuse. Beautiful dreamer. You see? Oh, Joni, I don't blame her. He's an absolute doll. Yeah, half the people in the country are crazy about him. The other half are men. How did you have to make a reservation six months in advance just to be able to throw yourself at his feet? <laughs> Rodney Parker, the new hot rod, is a man's man. He likes striped pajamas, icy showers, is a well-known skin diving enthusiast, a four-letter man at college, and a member of the honorary fraternity Phi Gamma Epsilon. He Phi, Phi Gamma? Why, that's Brad's fraternity. They have a motto about helping each other. I'll bet Brad can get him to come to dinner tonight. Gee, that would settle your problem. Oh, and how it would. You know, when one Phi Gamma meets another one, they fall into each other's arms and start to cry. Uh, hello, uh, Miss Brownlee. Oh, who's this? The bailiff? Oh, well, is Judge Stevens there? This is Mrs. Stevens. Oh, he went out? I see. Thank you. Brad left the office. He gave his secretary the afternoon off, too. Oh, that's too bad. You had a good idea, too. You know, it's still a swell idea. 
I'm going to go and see Rodney Parker and invite him to dinner myself. Beautiful Rodney, don't be a louse. I'll save my maid if you come out of my house. <laughs> I know it sounds silly being bothered about losing a cook, but she is the greatest. How'd you do it, old boy? After all, I couldn't refuse a, uh, an old Phi Gamma. <laughs> One for all. Oh, for one. I uh, tried to call my wife and tell her the good news, but the maid said she wasn't home. You know, Brad, I've been thinking. Uh, what if I do come to your house for dinner as you plan? Your maid will be happy for a while. Then eventually she'll want to meet another motion picture star and you'll have the same problem all over again. I know, but we'll keep her happy a little while. You know, uh, wouldn't it be better to cure her once and for all? Well, yes, but how? I played a scene in a picture once where I had to disillusion a girl who was in love with me. If I, uh... Do say so myself, I was simply magnificent. <laughs> I don't doubt it, but uh, what did you do? Hmm? Oh, uh, I invited her to my apartment. Then when she arrived, I proceeded to make mad love to her. Then, when she was putty in my hands, I cast her aside. Like yesterday's newspaper. You know, that might do the trick with Tilly. Get those stars out of her eyes. But uh, tell me, are, are you sure you can make her hate you? Well, it's always hard for me to make any woman hate me. But I can do it. I don't mind telling you, Brad. When I play a louse, I'm so convincing, I even hate myself. <laughs> Hello, Stevens residence. Uh, uh, Tilly, is Mrs. Stevens home yet? No, Judge Stevens, she hasn't come back yet. What? You want me to meet Rodney Parker in person? Right now? You can't wait till tonight to meet me. Where? I'll be right there. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'd better go before Tilly gets here. Don't worry about a thing, Brad. I'll give your maid such a going over, she won't even want to see Mickey Mouse again. Well, all I want is... Uh... Hey, that must be her. Now, listen, don't forget to call me as soon as it's over. The suspense will be killing me. Right. I'll tell you what, better yet, I'll wait here. If you like, go in there. Oh, Brad, by the way, uh, this is Tilly. She pretty? Pretty bad, huh? Oh, well, it's for a good cause. Go ahead, duck, duck. Oh, my Oh, how do you do, Mr. Parker? Uh, you don't know me, but Judge Stevens... Stop! Don't speak. Huh? That voice. It's music. Huh? Music! Say it again. Huh? 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 Look, Mr. Parker. And intelligent, too. A rare combination. Brains and beauty. Oh, really, Mr. Parker, I... Do you really think so? I never meant anything more in my life. Uh, Mr. Parker, uh, I have a problem. Yes, what is it? I forget. I mean, uh, Mr. Problem, I have a Parker that I'd like to ride me. Why to waste time to talk? This moment may never happen again. Oh, well, that's all right with me. I, uh, I, excuse me, I sort of slipped off the thing. And uh, you see, Mr. Um, I, uh, I really... <laughs>
down. Have you read any good books lately? <laughs> You know something, Brad? I think maybe I'm overdoing it. Are you kidding? You can't overdo it with Tilly. You can even be stronger. Really? Okay, if you say so. <laughs> you know, it's lucky that she hasn't got a husband. Otherwise, he'd put you in the hospital. Yes, that is lucky. <laughs> say, Rodney, I, I want to thank you again. Oh, don't thank me. I'm enjoying it. Well, how can you say that? Evidently, our tastes differ, old boy. I think she's pretty cute. You mean it? Well, of course I do. Oh, well, back to work. Or rather, should I say, back to fun? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Clark, good luck. This is so I'll take you here. down from that tree, my little plum. No, no, please. Oh, not uh, no, Mr. Parker. <laughs> no, please, if you just don't, don't, Mr. Parker. Please. Uh, uh, play, uh, uh, give me the key, and I would like to think of the no. Enjoy the chase, huh? I warn you, it only makes you more fascinating. Oh, Come to me, my melancholy. <laughs> Really, I... Uh, you see, Mr. Parker, I... Uh, please. 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 Uh, wait, wait, wait. Where were you here for? Look, uh, lady, I'm busy. Judge Stevens invited me over. He did? He sure did. And here I am. Wait a minute. There's something screwy going on. Now there are two of them. Two? <laughs> Who is that? That's my wife. I'm going to see what my wife is doing here. Shoney did. <laughs> Oh, how did you know I was here? Stevens, you invited me over and here I am. Mr. Parker might at least have the decency to talk to me. You want to talk to him after what you just went through? What she went through? Oh, uh, oh, why don't we forget about the whole thing? I don't know what you're talking about. I just got here this minute. Well, you did? Well, then who was here before? Well, all I know is that Mrs. Stevens was here when I got here. Mrs. Why are you? <laughs> Yeah, let's keep our heads. Yeah, well, the only thing I want to keep is our maid. Now, why don't we all kiss and make up? Good idea. Uh, well, yeah, well, you can start with Tilly. Now, wait a minute. Well, you said yourself how pretty you thought she was. Uh, he <laughs> did. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> Play and try again. Be nice about it now. now I, I tell you, be big, be big, be big about it now, Tilly. Are you sure you can't stay a while longer, Mr. Parker? It's been very nice, but I really must run. Well, it was a shame all you could have was dinner. Yes. Uh, how about that, Tilly? Can she cook or can't she? Mrs. Stevens, that's, that's the best food I ever tasted in all my life. You know, she must have gotten a real thrill when you went out to the kitchen to thank her. Oh, yes, yes. and thank you again for coming to dinner and making Tilly so happy. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, well, it's been very nice, and thank you, and uh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ah, well, uh, that takes care of our little problem with Tilly. Yeah, that ought to keep her happy for a while. Mm. You know, that Rodney Parker is a wonderful person. He really is. Tilly, where are you going? I'm quitting, Mrs. Stevens. But Tilly, you said you'd stay if we had a movie star to dinner. I know, but I'm going where I can see a movie star for dinner every day. Rodney Parker hired me for his cook. <laughs> Here. <laughs> 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 
Joe. Seen in tonight's cast were Phil Van Zandt, Virginia Rose, Sandra Gould, Sheila Bromley, Margie List. Furs by Lipsy Incorporated. I Married Joan, starring Joan Davis. Joe.